Let the grace of God bless man and every woman in this land. Stay strong, keep your faith alive. Whatever comes to me, us, no the darkness won't defeat us. Stay strong and keep your faith alive. The ancient wisdom reveals that the universe is a living, breathing, conscious being. And that everything that moves, everything that vibrates in this creation is the life breath of a living universe. Uh, this, this mystical syllable OM is the sound of the ground state, is the sound of it. We sang that everything that, that moves is the vibration of this living universe, the ground state out of which this vibration arises. Uh, the primordial sound of the life breath of a living universe is this is uh, what, what we tune into in this dimension as the mystical syllable OM. And for all the mystery of creation, this mystery of creation is here in this syllable OM, just for the mystery that is on this breath. The mystery that is within this breath, the mystery that is carried upon this breath, that you are not merely a wave in this ocean, but you are the ocean in the wave that all of the powers, all of the gifts of this mystery are fully in present, fully present in this gift that you are, that each of us personifies a living embodiment, a living personification of an instant of the infinite creative potency of this great and wondrous and mysterious thing that we simply call life. So we come together once again to contemplate this incredible gift, this incredible mystery, this amazing, amazing divinity of this goddess who in her love and wisdom has become this creation who lives within you and I and everyone and everything. I was thinking this morning how much I love the law of karma because the law of karma is the law of cause and effect. It says everything that you have or don't have, everything that you are or aren't, is the fruit of your own efforts through infinite lifetimes. That you are 100% responsible for where you're at in this breath, in this moment, this instant. And that you're free to make a choice and to take responsibility for what you're going to do in the rest of this infinite journey that you uh, can uh, cultivate a destiny uh, and that you are responsible for your destiny. Fortunately, I, I don't think this is quite the whole picture. I think there's always an element of karma and grace. <laughs> Fortunately, there's grace. <laughs> that showers possibility upon us at critical junctures in our life. And um, here on Earth, this amazing, amazing experience that we call being alive on Earth is ruled by Jupiter. That because the Earth is so dense, the core of the Earth is entrained with uh, the planet Jupiter. And the other name, the classic name for Jupiter is Brihaspati, the guru to the gods. So fire is the transformational, the creative, the evolutionary energy. And fire, the planet that rules fire is Jupiter. So like, you know, if you think of fire, just all the joys of fire, light and... Uh, warmth 
and realize that all our energy comes from explosions as we burn fossil fuels or comes from the sun so much uh, that our energy uh, that propels civilization is an expression of fire. And fire is also the fire of vision, the fire of inspiration, the fire of creativity. Well, fire is ruled by Jupiter. And in fact, uh, th this color saffron is the color of Jupiter. If you want to accelerate your evolution, uh, you can wear saffron in India. All of the saints and all of the sages wear the sunset colors. They're all wearing saffron. They're all wearing red. They're all wearing gold. These sunset colors that are ruled, ruled by Jupiter. When I first went to India, in 1971, I remember in Varanasi being struck by this color. And when I got to Kathmandu, I immediately bought some saffron clothing. It must have been a, a past life memory of being a sadhu or a sannyasa or a renunciate. I immediately bought some saffron and brought it to a tailor and had him make me a, a saffron, uh, saffron outfit. And I put it on and it was too high a rate of vibration. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle that energy. Of, I wasn't pure enough. So I sold it to a guy with, um, with hepatitis who was that color already and moved on with my life. So now after a half century of purification, I can, uh, I can uh, wear saffron comfortably. Uh, uh, but in any case, if you want an easy way to accelerate your evolution, um, get yourself a terracotta wardrobe or at least a terracotta t-shirt. Uh, our yoga room is painted saffron uh, here at home. So we're talking about one of the gifts of grace of how uh, evolution on our planet is ruled by Brihaspati. And the Shakti, the manifest power of Brihaspati, okay? The manifest power of Brihaspati is our earthly fire. And the name of his Shakti, the name of his power in nature is Swaha. That's why whenever we make an offering to the fire, which we think of as so, man, uh, so masculine, it's actually the feminine aspect of dear Guru Brihaspati who rules and accelerates our evolution into the light. Uh, so if you wonder why that root chakra is vermilion, is the color of molten lava, which they usually say red, or that second uh, chakra they usually say orange is the color of flame. Again, the, the flames dancing on the, multi, uh, on the molten lava of the evolutionary core of the earth. Or the third chakra is uh, the luster, the color of life, the light that radiates uh, from health and uh, from children, from saints, from uh, people who are running a sattvic diet. We're filled with luster, the, the, the radiance of a candle, the radiance of natural light. Why these three chakras are vermilion, flame, and luster? Uh, it is because these, uh, the evolution of the earth, the power that rises up out of the density of the earth is ruled by uh, grandfather uh, Jupiter, the great beneficent, uh, is ruled by Guru, Guru Brihaspati. The Guru to the gods is the Guru to all of us gods and goddesses who walk upon this earth. And uh, so as we cultivate our divinity, we've been given these ancient icons uh, to help us cultivate our divine qualities and focus on our divine qualities and the, uh, again, the Heraclitus tells us gods are mortal men, men are mortal gods. So we can uh, tune into our uh, divine and immortal uh, archetypal qualities. So we begin with the invocation of the goddess Saraswati, the essence of self. Uh, and again, she is a goddess of wisdom, a goddess of creativity, 
a goddess of priestcraft, priestess craft, and healing, and a good role model for all of us. Om Aim Sreem Hreem Saraswati things that's been happening to me is I think I've become a little more clear recently on the dynamics of how uh, consciousness uh, manifests um, as uh, this creation. Now, I, you know, there are a lot of dynamics. Every way of seeing is a way of not seeing. And anything that we're talking about here is just a finger pointing at the moon. So it's not actually the moon, but these will be things that are illustrating uh, aspects of the dynamics of energy and the dynamics of energy as a play of consciousness. Um, A couple of weeks ago, I put together a, a YouTube presentation contemplating ether and the qualities of ether, which I began to look at this. And I think at different times in the recent energy medicine class, we, we, uh, we looked at this, though the, um, uh, the, um, uh, the digital gods weren't always kind to us as we uh, looked at the animations uh, that are the basis uh, of this. This morning, we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at energy fields, contemplating energy fields, and some of the dynamics that define energy fields. Again, this question that I've been asking for years is, you know, how does this breath spiral down to every atom of the body? You know, what are the dynamics that describe the spiraling of the breath from the macrocosm of this, this organism down to the microcosm of the DNA? How does this living breath spiral down? And, it, and for years, I've been saying that the golden ratio spiral is the life breath of a living universe. That the mathematics of the golden ratio, which we, um, which we see so universally throughout nature and the cosmos, and the reason there is a universality and a ubiquity to the mathematics of the golden ratio uh, throughout nature and the cosmos um, is because it is the mathematics of Brahma, the life breath of a living universe. Uh, the life, again, the universe means uh, uh, tuned to one coil. Do you hear that? Tuned to one coil that the, that the ancients understood that we were all tuned to this one coil tuned to this one resonant and trained with this one universal life uh, breath. Indeed, our word spiritus from spirituality or spiral is uh, from the Latin breath, 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 breath. We come back to the breath as the uh, primary uh, vehicle uh, of understanding. Now, the next point I want to make is that form is an expression of uh, underlying energy. So what we're going to be doing are looking at different forms in nature and understanding that these forms are expression of the underlying energy fields and the rhythms or the dynamics of these underlying energy fields. So you always want to keep that in mind that when we're looking at a form, um, we're actually looking at the subtle energy that we're looking at the etheric body and the fruit of that causal body in manifestation. So that, uh, for instance, the reason our earthly music works is because it's tuned to the etheric realm. You hear that? That one of the ways to understand the dynamics of ether is to understand the dynamics of music. That music only, that that guitar is, 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 is junk until you attune those strings to the keynotes of, of, the, uh, of the ethers. 
So it's only that uh, attunement to whatever it is, this, me this medium here traditionally that is carrying that sound has been called ether. And the medium of ether is sound. And we tune that, that instrument uh, to, to the ethers essentially. So one of our most lucid ways of understanding subtle energy uh, is, is through music. Whenever we're talking about an energy field and the best images that we have of energy fields, uh, of course, come from the work of Dr. Babbitt who had micro clairvoyant uh, energy, uh, micro clairvoyant vision and could see the atomic realm. And so these images uh, from Babbitt from this principles of light and color. And then uh, here's a picture uh, from uh, there were a group of clairvoyants that worked together from 1895 until 1920 or 1930 uh, in England and in India. And they came up with this image of um, an, the ultimate atom. And their description of that, I thought I had it here, was really, really wonderful the way they describe it. something that like the infinite cycle of life uh, unfolding or folding into life was how they described it. Whenever we're talking about energy, we're talking about a field and we're talking about energy radiating from the nucleus uh, into the field. And the primary quality of that energy uh, that radiates from the nucleus into the field is the mathematics which describe the radiance of the energy from the nucleus in this field, I believe are the goal, is the golden ratio. And the thing that, so when we're talking about the radiance or the radii moving from the nucleus into the field, uh, the mathematics that describe that radiance is the golden ratio spiral. And what the golden ratio spiral allows is an infinite recursiveness, uh, which allows the nesting of energy fields. So now if you look at this video clip, notice how this spiral golden mean, if we see it from above, going down a cone and then rotate it to the side, begins to look like the, the tongue of a serpent there. Hence this term serpent power. And later we're going to revolve this form into something we call the grail couple. This is reminiscent of how it is that we get this recursion from a large world into the small, idealized by this golden mean spiral. So we can take this spiral now. This is one spiral seen from four views. The top left is a top view. And then to the right we have two to the side view. Bottom left is another side view, and bottom right is an oblique view. And then we begin to revolve this spiral, and we get a cup shape. This cup is infinitely recursive. You can zoom into it. First, let's turn it around to see the different viewpoints of the cup. Now we see that we can zoom in and we'd see a cup inside a cup inside a cup infinite. We'd always see the same thing. This is the essence of what is self-embedded. The definition of consciousness is recursion and the sense of the term fractal. Till by turning and turning we come round right. sense here is that that light cone going down concentric dodecahedron 60 degree which we use to ratchet into this form the grail cup is the same dodeca that ratchets to make dna so that really it is the genetic material itself that was referred to mythically as the cup of the grail that holds the light the memory because it is the idealization of the path for this recursion so that the gene pool itself is this recursive embedded cup 
that allows us to catch the light with what flows like lightning in our very bloodstream. That one illustration is the key to the to really the mystery of how energy fields are able to nest within each other from uh, the quark to the atom uh, to the molecule to the cell right up to galaxy. That this illustration illustrates how through the golden ratio spiral, the life breath of a living uh, universe is able to breathe down to every quark of creation, uh, that there is an infinite recursiveness and an infinite harmony uh, in the golden ratio spiral, that this is the mathematics of the universe, the mathematics of the one coil that unites all things, that underlies all things. Uh, so for instance, on our, on our planet Earth, 80% of the Earth herself um, is water. Water, water break, uh, that the dominant pattern water is the golden ratio spiral. Waves on our Earth uh, are in this illustration. So, and again, the solar winds are the same image that you see here in this illustration, that the uh, average distance of a planet, uh, the average orbit of the planets around the sun is again the same Fibonacci progression, the same golden ratio spiral that you find in your um, fingerprint or in the curl of your hair or curl of a canary's claw or an elephant's tusk that you find uh, the average distance of the, the planets as they spiral around the sun follow the same golden ratio that you find in the fretboard of your guitar or ukulele. It's the same proportional harmonics that we find in our music, we find in the planets. Um, and it's called Bode's Law in, in astronomy. Um, so we're talking about the universality uh, of uh, the golden ratio spiral. Now, uh, the Italian mathematician, not uh, person. Arab traders brought this work during the dark ages. They're not just created uh, mathematics. Flower, sunflower. This is the cochlea of your ear, where your ear is huge. Harmony with the cosmos, ultrasound and sonic harmony with the cosmos as they step down through the cochlea into the sphenoid <clears throat> and up to the uh, pineal and pituitary gland, but to the direction of our life. Uh, so we're, we're again talking about the ubiquity of this golden ratio spiral. Here, we're looking at the golden ratio spiral in a sunflower, and we're looking at it in terms of the yang breath, the positive breath, and the yin breath going in the opposite direction. And, the, and what we're saying in this illustration is this breath is ultrasonic, what we typically call rajas and tamas, rajas, the, the out breath, the prana, and tamas, the in-breath, apana, and that all forms in nature are an expression of these two ultrasonic fields, rajas and tamas, intersecting. The, again, the powers of the sun embodying rajas, radiance, and the power of the earth embodying tamas, 
and that all forms of nature take place uh, between these two dynamics. And the fascinating thing could, about could, that that was so fast. Okay. Which is the apana? Which is the apana, and which is the prana? Prana is rajas. Pra means to go forth. Is the radiance of the positive breath. The yang, the fiery, the masculine, the solar, and uh, the apan is the lunar breath, the feminine, the receptive, the cooling, the earth, the contracting. And what's most profound about the dance of these two ultrasonic fields, creation is vibration, creation is divine sound. What's most profound about this is the seeds grow at the intersection of sattva and rajas, where like a pair of noise-canceling headphones, the two waves counter each other to create a sattvic still point. And the seeds grow at the sophic still point. So here, um, we're looking here at the intersection of uh, Rajas and Tamas, and the seeds of the sunflower are growing a still point in every cycle. So where every atom and every molecule and every cell, um, every heartbeat, every dawn, every solstice, there is a still point in every cycle of sattva that the system of ultimate intelligence self corrects um, at, every, at every intersection of creation. Uh, heaven is truly upon us uh, that sattva is so, sattva, the force of, uh, of equilibrium is so uh, omnipresent. So the next place I wanted to go here with this was let's look at this one for a moment. So we're looking at the golden ratio spiral. I'm in, okay, I'm in the screen chair. We're looking at the golden ratio spiral. And here we're seeing how the same waves that are carrying the energy out are the same waves that are carrying the energy in. That one of the qualities of the spiral is it moves in two directions at the same time, like many of us. That the same waves that are carrying the energy out are the same waves that are carrying the energy in. I think this gift really illustrates that. And again, the gift, the reason this gift works is because it's golden ratio spiral. That the same breath uh, can move in two directions, nesting from a quark to universe in the same, same way. And then in the same way here, um, uh, we see it going from macrocosm to microcosm, from microcosm to macrocosm in the same way. I hope that's fascinating to you as it is to me. We're seeing the infinite recursiveness of the golden ratio spiral of the life breath as it moves from macrocosm to microcosm, from the universe to the quark and vice versa. Now in the same way, so here we're gonna, we're looking at the profound properties of the spiral. Comes from and returns to its source. Okay, ready? This is gonna get a little psychedelic now. Okay, so here we're looking at a radii of an energy field, okay? So all radii don't just go out, but they come back, okay? That every quark of energy is radiating from a source into the field and then coming back. One of the qualities of nature is nature is a cybernetic mechanism, that all energy in nature is homeostatic, that every atom, every molecule, every field uh, is self-creating. It de defines itself. Uh, autopoetic is the word that uh, contemporary biologists use, self-creating. And that all living things, regardless of whether they have nervous systems or not, are defined by this cognitive process. All living things 
all of nature, whether it has a nervous system or not, is fundamentally cognitive, is fundamentally a play of consciousness. That when we take this illustration here and we play it out at the speed of light, I mean, if you can picture this illustration, so all energy moves from the source into the field and returns to the source. And on the way, it's a continuum whose ends are opposite and yet the same. It demonstrates the cycle of change within a continuum. It demonstrates the alternation of polarities in each cycle. It embodies the principle of expansion, contraction through change of velocity. It embodies potential for simultaneous movement in either direction towards its two extremities. On the spherical vortex, these extremities, the center and the periphery, flow into each other. On the spherical vortex, these extremities are essentially interchangeable. The yin becomes yang, yang becomes yin. Um, so this dynamic that we're picturing here is consciousness. The definition of consciousness is recursiveness. That the definition of, of life is this cybernetic mechanism, is this feedback mechanism, which allows it to self-create, self-correct, and uh, maintain its definitive field and its homeostasis. So what we're visualizing here is that the nature of creation is consciousness, is intelligence, that all energy moves as a field of intelligence, that the only thing we have in nature is intelligence. So this breath, which moves from the from Brahma, the creator, down to the quark, uh, that through the golden ratio is able to nest from galaxies we see the same spiraling golden ratio in the galaxy as we see in the DNA. Uh, that this, the stuff of creation is consciousness, is, uh, is intelligence. And this is what we, the definition of intelligence is the ability to adapt to its environment, the ability to learn. So every atom, every molecule, every cell of nature is out picturing a state of homeostasis, taking in its experience of its environment and self-correction. And this is the definition of learning, the definition of intelligence, and is the definition of, of consciousness. So if you can picture energy moving um, as an expression of this golden, infinite recursiveness of this golden ratio spiral, which we're seeing here, in this foreign Taurus gift. Uh, this is an understanding of unitive consciousness and an understanding of the ubiquity of intelligence and how uh, energy is able to nest from the galaxy to the quark in a universe attuned to the one coil of the golden ratio spiral, the mathematics of the breath of life of a living universe. Now, I believe this, this illustration, the kind of thing we've been contemplating this morning is the key uh, to the, one of the keys to the mystery uh, of life and consciousness and one of the keys to understanding uh, energy uh, in the healing arts. Let the grace of God bless man and every woman in this land. Stay strong, keep your faith alive. Whatever comes to meet us, no the darkness will defeat us. Stay strong and keep your faith alive.